This is Amateur Logic, episode 188, for December 15th, 2023. Amateur Logic is brought to you by ICOM. Searching for the perfect holiday gift? This holiday season, make your gatherings merrier, your message clearer, and your connection stronger with ICOM. Welcome to another Christmas episode of Amateur Logic. I'm George. I'm Tommy. I'm Emil. And I'm Mike. So, Tommy, what's been going on with you? Uh, trying to get the Christmas stuff all done, man. Christmas shopping, what little bit I've done. I still got a lot to go, like most of it. Uh, we still got a fair amount to go, too. Got myself a Christmas present. I actually did a segment on it. So. You did. Right. So, anyway, I, pretty excited about that. I got that, about it a lot. that same Christmas present. And if I'm not wrong, we'll both be getting some even better Christmas presents than that here in, I don't know, maybe a week or so. Yeah, that'd be great. I'm looking forward to it. Yep. Email. What's going on down there? Well, we, we are uh, surviving the uh, weather down here in the swamps. Everybody is jumping from uh, high 70s to 30s, and that's not agreeing with everybody's sinuses and, uh, you know, everybody's sick or got something down here, coughing or uh, having some fun. So I'm going to say that. We're surviving the weather. Are the rootaroos still stirring when it's cold like that? Absolutely, especially this time of year. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Mike, how's the moose? I haven't heard from the moose yet. Um, actually, we're in a bit of a warming trend right now. Um, it it got above. We had snow on the ground and uh, pretty much disappeared today on account of the weather. Um, I think we hit plus 8 Celsius. And uh, this evening, it's supposed to be, our low is supposed to be only, only plus 2. So it's not even going down to freezing overnight so uh we're getting a bit of a, a warm, warm stretch right now wow huh. probably the same temperature there as it is in south louisiana <laughs> yeah uh, I, it looks a little bit colder in south louisiana than it does in Canada. all right he's pretty bundled yeah. up hey i'm uh, yeah it's i'm not even colder. i'm not even in the sweater that's insane uh, put, put, put your drink in <laughs> my pouch it's on yeah. the naughty list already. Oh, oh that, yeah, yeah. That was Put quick. My... <laughs> we'll, discuss, we'll discuss that a little later, Mike. I got this by way of Cousin Jerry. Um, it was an interesting um, article on a, um, I guess you could call it a, a fire scene investigation. Um, it was a tanker, uh, and it was in dock, uh, so it wasn't underway or anything. Um, and uh, there was a fire on board. In the uh, in the room off the bridge, um, and it was caused by uh, a lithium battery pack from a handy talkie. Apparently, over three million dollars worth of damage. Wow, that's pretty Ouch. scary. There was nobody injured or anything. Um, apparently, nobody was actually there when it when it caught fire. But if you read the article, there are pictures um, because they have uh, you know security cameras on board and. And you can see when it actually caught fire and how the fire progressed. An interesting article because uh, it, uh, lithium ion batteries weren't the only ones there. Uh, that there were some uh, nickel um, metal hydride batteries as well. So initially they weren't sure which, what caused the fire. But uh, reading through the article, it was definitely uh, from one of the lithium ion battery packs. Wow. Yeah, the nickel metal hydrides are fairly stable yeah well tommy you mentioned something about a christmas present a moment ago that you got yeah you know i've been trying to get a pi zero two w for a long time seems like about five years it it feels like it. it's been probably close to two since they were announced yeah and uh but i finally got one in and it uh, was worth the 15 bucks i've been waiting for this day for a long time i finally got my Raspberry Pi 02WN. This is my original Raspberry Pi 0W, and this is the 2W. If we look at the chart here, you can see there's not really a lot of difference in it, 
The, the device is essentially the same size. It's got the same connectors, pretty much. The biggest difference visibly is the CPU chip. This one's a lot smaller than the on the new one. The pins are all the same. Every, all that stuff's still the same, so they're compatible. And uh, the biggest difference is this chip is five times faster than this one. I've also got my N5BOC uh, full duplex uh, hat MMDVM hotspot device here that uh, plugs onto the top of my Pi Zero W. That's kind of a mouthful. But anyway, I want to speed test it. I, I love this device. It's really awesome. The only downside is the slowness of the Raspberry Pi Zero W. If you change modes, like on the Soundcheck Net, well, it's not the Soundcheck Net anymore. It's the Logic Net. And anyway, you can check in on multiple modes. So a lot of times I want to check in on uh, Echo Link, and then I'll go here, and I'll use this little DMR radio and check in using my hotspot and I'll switch over to D-Star and finish it out which is my preferred method but try to get as many modes in as I can um, but anyway it takes a long time to switch between modes so let's go ahead and hook it up I've got uh, some stuff here I've got my HDMI cable I'm going to record I'm going to hook up to record the uh, boot sequence so you can see how fast it boots up and I've got a little adapter to go from a micro USB to a USB-A. And then I've, on the end of that, I've got my dongle for my little keyboard. So I, if I decide I want to type something in on the keyboard, I can. And then I've got my power. And I've got the hat for the MMDVM device, the M5BOC one. So I'll go ahead and plug that up. Just plugs right onto these header pins. And I'll put the little display on it because we get a little bit more feedback from it. It's not required, but I, I like it to be there. And let's go ahead and power it up. Let me get this one out of the way. I'm going to speed test them. I'm going to uh, use the exact same SD card in the new one and see because the SD card speed can make a difference in your performance. I'm going to, that's why I'm going to use the same card in both devices. So it's booting. There it goes. It's pretty slow. It has nothing to do with this, the, the uh, hat, the N5BOC hat, but it's just the Pi itself. So when it comes up, I'm going to confirm that it's in DMR mode. If it's not, I'm going to switch it, and then we're going to switch it over to um, we're going to switch it to D Star and count it down on the timer on my cell phone here. Okay, I think it might be ready. And there we are, DMR. So let's switch over. I'm going to turn off the DMR radio, move it out of the way. Let's get the timer going. And I'm going to go over here to the computer and I'm going to switch this to D from DMR to D star. I'm going to apply the changes and start the timer. So let's see how long it takes before we can hear it say something on the D-Star radio. You probably won't have to touch it every now and then or it's going to go to sleep on me.
Okay, so D star is ready. It took 57 seconds, almost a minute. 57.37. So let's go ahead and power this down. No power. Shut down. So let's go ahead and swap devices. I'm going to go ahead and pull the power first. And let's put the power to it. And we should see it boot up. Should boot up much faster. It's going to boot up in D star, so I'm going to have to switch it back. You can see it booting up a little faster. Boot up's not really the problem though. It's the uh, after it boots up that takes a while. And the minute's not terrible to wait. It's just uh, I prefer it to be a little faster. Okay, so it's up. And let's put it back to DMR. Turn off D star and let's go and apply the change. Give this just a minute to restart. And I'll turn this one back on. Oh wow, that should be up. That is much faster. But uh, let's go ahead and do the same test. I'm going to turn the DMR radio off. Put the D-Star right here. Let's get the uh, timer ready. We'll reset. And no, I don't want to save that. Let's change that. Turn off DMR, turn on D-Star. Apply the changes and start. Oops. About an extra two seconds before I got the button clicked. And we should say here it say not linked. Not linked. Wow. Twenty one seconds. Wow, that is fast. That is, that is really fast. Not sure what else to try, but uh, to me, that's worth the change right there. It's a huge difference in speed over the old one, worth the $15. $15 plus the cost of uh, row, two rows of header pins and a few minutes to solder them on. I did those this morning. It took me about uh, 15 minutes to get them all cut put on there and cleaned up and everything so worthy upgrade so hope they found it useful it uh, looks to be 100 percent compatible with the old one just faster 73 that does look faster it, it's way faster man and then when i was using the original one i cut out about two minutes of video i couldn't make you guys listen to that song the uh, amateur logic hey. piano player for another two minutes well straight. i was that was my you, best piano you hear me work. Grooving on the uh, conga drums. Yeah, <laughs> that was my best conga drum work too. <laughs> I, I thought I thought the music kind of fit pretty pretty good for the theme there. Yeah, um, but anyway, it's uh, it's way faster, man. I'm I'm I just left it in there. I went ahead and put it right in my case, just like it was. It's cool because the same SD card and everything worked with yeah. it just fine. Emil, no I know he said it was fifteen dollars, but if you count. He got a an original Pi Zero W back. What were those things? Ten dollars? Yeah. I think so the, the pin headers and uh, you know yeah. that, I started tallying there. Well, that, but that is the per. Go ahead. That's like a rebate. I mean, he's got ten dollars <laughs> back, so he only got five plus the headers. There in you it. go. It's a bargain. Yeah. <laughs> Still got. That's a perfect fun. size, though. Perfect match for the uh, N5 VOC and everything. Yeah. Yeah, and and the the. Uh, the speed of it is just amazing. I, I expected it to be some faster, but I didn't think it was going to be that much faster. Yeah. I'm amazed that you could just do a, a card swap and it boots up fine. Uh, usually when there's that much jump in uh, in processor speed, 
uh, usually requires a different version of the uh, Pi OS. Yeah, yeah, me too. I might try put. George was asking if I thought it might be a little faster even yet with the uh, redoing the card, and, and it might a little bit, but uh, I'll probably do that sometime soon. I don't know. Yeah, I got my 2W as well, and I'm not sure if I'm going to put it in my hotspot or not. I just don't know. It's, it's well, worth it. It's $15. Well, it is, but, I mean, it's really more than that if you count it, the weight that you got to go through to get one of those. What else are you going to do with it? Just leave it on the shelf? No. I've got hey, plenty of others on the shelf. Hey, AML, did you you and George swap positions or something? Because I'd swear he's talking to a cheap old man right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was going to ask you if you had anything in your uh, box of unfulfilled dreams like that. As a matter of fact, I do. Something arrived on my doorstep. Oh, yeah? I don't know if you can. It's kind of small. I'll just read it. Uh, you've been pied. Merry Christmas from from Cheap Old Man Compliance Department. Well, let's have a look. Oh, he's right. It is a pie. Huh. Awesome. Is it raspberry? <laughs> I can't read it. What does it say? He's bad. Still can't it's read it. It says tasty pastry. It says French, French on the bottom, I guess, but I don't know what it says. Oh, that's I no oh. I couldn't read it. I wouldn't. I don't think I'd eat that one. Would oh wow! Thanks, man. It's a Raspberry Pi Two W. Awesome. Oh wow! What do you know? Look at so, that. Just so you know, George. Yeah. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to upgrade my jumbo spot with the Two W. There you go. Okay. Well, see, there's no reason for me to do it now. Cause well, you won't be talking to us quite as quick as we'll be talking to you. That's okay. I don't talk that fast <laughs> Thanks anyway. Thanks a million, Emil. Merry Kissmoose, Mike. That was nice. Yeah, awesome. awesome. Tasty. Tasty. Does it taste like raspberry? <laughs> Tasty pastry. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go away. We'll be right back. Searching for the perfect holiday gift? This holiday season, make your gatherings merrier, your message clearer, and your connection stronger with ICOM. Whether inside the ham shack or on the air in the great outdoors, ICOM has what's at the top of your favorite ham's wish list. The ID5100 AD is innovation and mobility taken to the next level. Designed from user input, the ID5100 AD offers an intuitive user interface experience with an industry-leading touchscreen display. This radio is one of the most advanced dual-band mobiles on the market today. The ID52A is a VHF-UHF dual-bander with D-Star and FM dual functions and is the first handheld amateur radio with a full-color 2.3-inch waterfall display. The new ID50A gives hours of fun and enjoyment working your favorite bands. Easy D-Star settings, band scope and waterfall display, voice messaging, share picture function, and it uses the same optional accessories as the ID52A, ID51A, and ID31A. Explore the world of microwave with ICOM's new SHF portable, the IC905. This all-mode rig covers 2 meters through 70 centimeters, 1.2 gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz, 5.6 gigahertz bands, and with the optional CX-10G transverter, 10 gigahertz. Aim higher and enter the world of SHF. The IC7300 is a high-performance, innovative HF transceiver with a compact design that will far exceed your expectations. This is the radio that changed the way entry-level HF was designed. The real HF fun starts here. For the mobile and outdoor aficionados, ICOM's IC7100 is road-ready. At home or wherever you roam, happy holidays from ICOM. For more information about ICOM's amateur radios and to locate a dealer, visit icomamerica.com slash amateur. Thanks, ICOM, for sponsoring Amateur Logic. You know, Emil, we got something in the post as well. We did? Don't say. A couple of somethings, yeah. These boxes right here, there's two boxes here. You want to open one of them, Tommy? Sure. 
You got your official Amateur Logic box opening tool there. I do. Got some serious tape on here. Hermetically this sealed. Oh, this is from our friend. You say who it's from? Her oh, I said hermetically sealed. Yeah, who's it from? Friend Elliot. 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 Eckert. Okay. It's got some serious tape on here, though. I have to get a better. He actually sent that. Back before, well, back sometime in November, and you weren't here that episode. Oh, yeah. So, I held it, because I didn't have the official opening tube with me. Uh, I was on the plane. Oh, wow. Oh. More Peach. Bigelow's. Yeah, awesome. Peach. What kind we got there? Peach? Peach. Perfect peach. peach. Orange and spice. Hmm. Peppermint, ginger honey. There you go. That's that's my favorite right there. Ginger honey, vanilla caramel. Absolutely. Wow, you got the mother load there. That was pretty that's cinnamon stick. I think we tried vanilla caramel last year. Cool man. And then cinnamon stick. Elliot sent that to us last year too. He, I think he sent most of these last year. And this has become my new favorite. The cinnamon stick? Uh-huh. But what do we want to try, Tommy? What Which one do you want to try there? I think I'm going to go with the ginger honey. Email recommends it. Yeah, that's, that's why I'm going to go for that one. Okay. Go ahead and open Let's it up. Let's see what we had here. Orange spice. Perfect peach. You have to be careful when you say that you use the proper cadence. <laughs> I think I'm going to try the orange spice. I'm going to try the ginger, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there, good, Mike. Good point. Speaking of orange and spice, you were, asking about, you were asking about my pouch earlier, Mike. There's my... Uh... Oh. I got, a, I got a llama sweater, too. I didn't Look, know they had pouches. Is that a llama, or is that supposed to be a kangaroo? It's a, it's a, a llama, and I, I have some orange spice in there, too. Some Grand Marnier. Grand Marnier. Nice. Keep yeah, away from fl open flame. <laughs> That's got some orange spice in it. That's it sure good. does. Good thing I had a, a kettle of hot water handy here. No, this is not the kettle that Nigel sent us. Nigel, Mike. we had to go straight from brewing or heating the water to pour it in the cup here, so I, I couldn't pull out um, your authentic UK <laughs> stainless kettle. But maybe next time. Let that steep for a few. Four to six minutes. How many? Four to six minutes usually. And I'll have to have my drink from the naughty list. Okay. Hey, what's in that mug? <laughs> Aren't you what you know? <laughs> well, while we're waiting on that, you want to do this? Um, yeah. Tommy, you got. It's not. Well, it is. It came from an email. It came from an email, but it's uh, it's it's a PDF. This came from our friend Nigel in the UK, GE0MEJ. The Ofcom office, I'm assuming that's the Office of Communications. I'm not really sure what that means. But uh, there are a lot of changes coming to the amateur radio licensing there. Uh, looks like they're going to... There's too many to read because, uh, it's like I said, it's 103 <coughs> pages. But the summary of it is uh, one of the big things is the power limit's going to be increased from... Uh, I think 400 for the full license to 1,000 or 1 kW now for a full license. That's a boat ball at a time. Yeah. You guys over there are going to like a kilowatt. Your mate, neighbors may not, but you're going <laughs> to like it. Yeah. So, anyway, thanks for letting us know about that, Nigel. Yeah. I wasn't aware those changes were coming, so it's pretty interesting. Tommy, you're not the only one who did a hotspot upgrade recently. I'm not. No, apparently not. Oh, yeah. It's kind of, it's tis the season, I guess. 
and and remarkably ironic because uh, Eric, you know, Eric Buttinger is in the uh, chat channel with us uh, mm-hmm. tonight, and and yeah, he he mentioned something. The King of Jersey, right? He mentioned something that was uh, very relevant to my segment, George and Tommy and Mike, and uh, you'll see. You know, I've been on a kick recently making sure my pies are updatable at the OS layers, not necessarily the application, that's good too, but also at the OS layers. So I was looking for something that supported uh, the newest releases of um, of PyOS, and I happened to find something from W0CHP. Check it out. Hello, George, Tommy, Mike, Amateur Logic TV viewers. I was recently looking for a way to have uh, my Pie Star image uh, also have the ability to update the operating systems files since the Pie Star images from Pie Star are still using the Buster OS. Just like uh, in my prior episode, we figured out to uh, move up to the Bullseye version of the Pi OS. Well, this is the same way, except this time I found another project using the uh, MMDVM Pi Star type dashboard and uh, modems. And this one has some extra features to it, which I thought were pretty interesting. So... I gave it a try. And here on the screen, you can see from W0CHP.radio, there is the WPSD project, or as he affectionately calls it, the plausibly stands for divergence. Uh, That's an interesting take on that. But uh, okay, so he's definitely changing away, moving away a little bit from, uh, or a lot of bit, from... Pi Star. With that said, you can see the modes that it's that are covered here. Uh, M17 DMR D Star Yesu System Fusion C4 FM P25 NXDN for mm-hmm. your hotspot. Uh, I'm still using the N5 BOC uh, duplex board, which is still working great, Dennis. Thank you. Um, and that is. A little bit about the the project itself so he he does maintain he being w0chp and his this team here uh several images um orange pie nano pie zum spot the dv mega bridgecom sky bridge so the one i was doing of course in my case was the uh, raspberry pi i have a four dedicated to that uh that system here in the uh, studio shack. And again, my major reasoning for wanting to do this was to get out from under the old buster, which is not really receiving development or um, updates anymore on the OS layer, not the application, PyStar. Well, I guess PyStar itself, I think they've pretty much uh, uh, taken a very long break from uh, developing that and or uh, just stopped doing it. So he picked it up and he's running with it here. And the latest image is actually on Bullseye. So that means I can now get my updates on the OS as well as any updates he might be putting out there for this WPSD project. So with that said, let me go and look a little bit into it here. I actually have my dashboard up just so you can see. Yeah, I have my dashboard. Here it is. It's uh, running on another Pi 3 that I use to display this all the time on a monitor here in the uh, shack so I can see who's talking. And that is one of the features, in fact, uh, that I really enjoy about it. Up at the top here, if you tell it to uh, display the caller's details, it will in a little bit larger font than here. It's whoever's talking uh, recently or, or right now. And I thought that was a nice feature, but there's also 
a larger display of that as well, where you can have just that uh, information displayed as big as a screen. Now that that's works pretty good when you're on a, a monitor <clears throat> and you want to see or, or have a monitor in your shack and you want to see who's talking when you hear somebody coming over that uh, hotspot. So uh, pretty good features here. And so far, i move that into the frame a little bit more. So far, it's just working. It works great. I had no trouble setting up the Star Yesu System Fusion and DMR, the uh, three radios that I keep very nearby here. Um, that's always listening to something. Um, and it will automatically switch with the timeouts on both the network as well as the uh, RF side or, or what it's, which mode it's listening for. Um, the Brandmeister. API for DMR works fine as long as you have your new API keys and passwords plugged in. All of that works uh, with DMR. I wasn't going to use this to go into those details, uh, this particular segment, but the real big thing is all about the uh, OS, making sure that Pi is not just sitting there on the old version of the OS or Pi OS, not getting updates or security flaw, you know, Flow remediation, as we call it in the uh, industry. So, um, yeah, works very good. Um, the Pi 4, of course, has no troubles running this thing at all. Um, I think I have a 2 gig Pi 4, so it's not a problem. It'll run on much less than that. But that's what I had dedicated to it here in the shack. And on that front, here you can see... I uh, have a SSH or a putty session open to the box itself, the Pi, and <clears throat> you can see he changed up the uh, even the shell a little bit uh, and customized it. But you can see at the bottom here when I when I uh, cat do a cat Etsy OS release, you can see that it's actually running Bullseye or version 11 of the Pi OS. So that is the trick and with the old version there was a command that you used to run which was uh, i think it was pi star update or uh, something along those lines on this one it's a little bit different um if you sudo wpsd dash update it will update the application wpsd if he's putting anything out there for the dashboards or any other of the uh, files it's going to download all of that with a script that's built in to this image but if you notice at the end here, if you add OS, it's going to do both. It's going to update the application as well as any updates from Pi and uh, the, the Pi OS repositories. So that was the biggest plus for me and why I went along these lines and did that <clears throat> in the first place. And like I said, it's working great. Um, Shoot. Well, I guess what? Let me go ahead and do that just to do it. You can see how it'll run to. He's got a little software update. Uh, connects to his repos, I'm sure, or his services that he has out there. And there you go. The dashboard just showed it went offline. It'll go through the normal things dashboards, etc. Update and host files for all the reflectors we connect to and uh, talk groups and you name it. It's going to go get all that information, put it in there, <clears throat> stops and starts the uh, services. And then right after this, because I specified that OS parameter, it's also going to do any operating system updates, as you can see here, which is going to probably Pi's repositories. Again, the main the main reason I did this, for sure. Of course, there's no updates because I just did this yesterday when I installed the image and set it up. It was very easy to set up. Um, he has a lot of good information out there on getting started, getting help and support. Um, and it just worked. Uh, it really did. It was uh, not, a, not a hard thing to do at all. If you're familiar with setting up PyStar, images and going through the different modes and 
uh, the DMR settings and the, the Brandmeister console API setting. If you're used to doing that or you have done that before, you're not going to have a trouble, any troubles with this one. Um, <clears throat> now, one thing I do notice or recommend, the way I set them up is through wired LAN here. It's on my wired LAN in the house. So uh, I simply took the SD card out of the existing Pi and put the a new one in with this image and speaking of that this is the image um like i like we showed before he maintains some different uh different images well setting that up or burning that image is simply as simple as using raspberry pi's imager you just point to a custom operating system usually all the way at the bottom when you select one and then go find that image in this case, it is called WPSDRPyLatest.image.exe. So it'll recognize the file type and you choose your SD card and write it to it. That's all I had to do. Nothing special. And beyond that, it's just a matter of booting up the Pi and going through the setup, which he has a very simple walkthrough um, to show you how to do that. And again, I followed it pretty much step for step did not have any trouble whatsoever and there it is working and now I can get both application updates all the modes that I wanted and some more here from what I see I don't believe I had added the uh, M17 I think Mike had a segment on that but as far as this goes I uh it just worked that's all I can say so thank you to uh W0CHP for the project in the work into this and making it as easy as it was uh, on the WPSD plausibly stands for divergence. I love that um, dashboard using my uh, N5 BOC uh, duplex, basically a repeater here, low power in, inside uh, works great. That modem is uh, really good, but uh, I recognized it. He saw it and uh, it just, the whole thing just works. So shout out to all the people who made that work. And I'm, I'm really happy with the dashboard. <clears throat> the live caller is the uh, feature I was referring to before. And if I click on that here, <clears throat> it's usually going to, uh, let me see. Yeah, it'll go, it'll show you who the last person who uh, called, but this is the one where you can leave up on the monitor just so you can see it from across the room on who's actually talking, when they were talking, um, and how long ago, uh, that kind of thing. And some basic uh, information about the hotspot, uptime, the host, or you can go right back to the main dashboard from there. He's got hyperlinks everywhere to get it. So uh, good stuff. Again, it just works, and I've tested every all three modes connecting out to uh, uh, the groups and connecting up to the gateways and the YSF rooms. Uh, that's the three main ones that I uh, use it for in the first place. So I've tested all of it, and I've gotten great reports back. No, no issues so far. So 7-3. K5QKR. You got me interested, in, Emil. I'm going to have to try that. I'm Actually, I'm going to set it up for sure. Um, <laughs> oh, forgot about the grand finale. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, I'm I'm sorry. I left a little tail on that before I edited it, George. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, one thing, yeah, I don't yeah. know if it's changed or not, but I know at the time when I uh, did the segment on W0CHP um, and his uh, his alternative to Pystar, um, he added so many features, You he warned you, you couldn't run it on a, um, on a, a regular uh, uh, 2W or a, a regular uh, Pi 0W. Oh, okay. uh, but I'm thinking with the the two W, um, it'll have no problem. Yes, yes. Yeah, he's, he as long is. as I don't go back to being sluggish again. 
in that case i'll so i think i'll save the card i've got yeah but to uh to answer your question yeah tommy that you know the reason i did it of course was just to be sure i was getting those updates at the os level since the yeah. other one stopped correcting issues and i don't want them say i have a dozen of those pies doing different things around the house here uh -huh. so i don't want them sitting idle without being updated yeah, I, I, that's a good point. I'm I'm curious if you tried connecting to a. I apologize if I missed it because we were talking about something during part of the segment. But um, if you tried connecting to a repeater instead of a uh, a reflector or something, like you know how oh. uh, to, how uh, the Pi Star won't it doesn't always work. It's not reliable. You know what? I haven't I haven't gone down that road. I've been hitting all the. Uh reflectors and and uh the the D, the brandmeister api changed their certificates again too they, yeah. they they went to another version sometime in september maybe august so i had to redo my api setup but i know what you're talking about connecting to a repeater direct rather than through a room or a reflector so yeah i haven't done that yet but he he's downloading all the ips in the in the room so i'll have to check that out yeah, if you try it, let me know. I'll de that'll definitely be the one to push me over the edge because uh, I do that fairly frequently, and uh, it's kind of a pain. You you can get it to work on PyStar, but you have to reboot and then go back in or, or change settings and let it run through that whole reboot process and do all that stuff, so it's a bit of a hassle. So if that's if that's fixed in there, that's a... Uh, so I'll buy one. Oh, well, they're free. Yeah, that's right. The price was right. Orange spice is pretty good, Tommy. Yeah, I got the ginger. Ginger honey. <laughs> you tried out the ginger honey? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really good. It's tasty. It says it supports healthy lifestyle, too. Probably need to try some of that. Yeah. Instead of my typical unhealthy lifestyle. From our uh, friend uh, David Telling Jr., KJ7WT, out of um, Nevada. And he wrote to us in reference to one of the uh, cheaper NOAA weather radio radios that you can buy, you know, Chinese manufactured. And he was asking, I remember he was asking questions and trying to figure out from his uh, documentation on what was happening. Because when he put it into NOAA mode, as he called it, um, it was just sitting there and he couldn't change any channel. He was trying to figure out what was happening. And as everybody here, a lot of hams probably know, we have the National Weather Service All Hazards Radio System. And the thing to note about that is that it's uh, regional, right? There's there's two types of radios nowadays. The ones that'll pick up the tones for an entire region. And there's also the ones that have the SAME or same, um, they call it specific area message encoding. So, you know, the difference there... One of them will just sit there listening for your nearest station that's in your area, and it'll it'll alert for that whole region, whereas the SAME-enabled radios will only alert. It's still listening to the same station, but it'll only alert when the code for your specific area, that's why they call it that, goes off or, or is encoded into a message. So... I just wanted to share what we knew on on that one because there's a lot of hams out there. I don't know what it is with hams and weather, and and this is the view of his station in Carson City, Nevada, I believe, for a regional area. You can see the little green, you know, heat map yeah. or coverage map they made, um, and he I think is down this way, um, and I, I'm believing he's saying he can hear that, but the actual county the same or SAME code for specific counties or areas are listed on their site. So if you go to nws or weather.gov and you, you can find all that information. So again, I think in his case, the reason the weather, the radio sitting there doing nothing when he put it into NOAA mode is because it's waiting for those regional uh, tones to come through. I don't think he has the same, the SAME radio. Just know that there's two different types of radios out there. The ones that have that regional alerting, and then there's the SAME ones as well. So, and that's that. Okay. Thanks for the update email. Yeah, I've just uh, recently worked on the opposite end of that. Installing some new ES encoders at some radio stations. Oh, yeah? Ah, and, on the broadcaster side. Yeah. Okay. And 
they get all the traffic comes in and then we filter it out and specific counties and areas and then what type of an alert it is and to determine if we're going to rebroadcast it or not. Oh, that's so, interesting. I'd like, yeah. we don't have to do it here, but I'm a, I'd like to understand how you know which ones to filter out and which ones to send. Numbers. Oh, you get it, uh, digital data? It's like over the internet? Uh, we get that too. Here's, I was, okay. Yeah, well, I mean, the the weather usually is coming from the local NOAA here, but there's also uh, iPods, they call it. Like George, George was just about to explain, there's, a, there's an entire system behind that, the iPod system, and it's sending digital messages that are specific. Mm -hmm. And their, their systems are decoding it and sending that out over the air so that the radios will know, oh, I got to go off now, right? It's, so there's digital messaging and there's tones. Mike, you know how they have tones for the regional areas? There's a tone that yes. goes out that will open the squelch of the radio. But right. then there's also digital messaging, which is what George was just mentioning. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're like monitoring two FM stations, NOAA weather radio, and uh, iPods hmm. to, to get emergency messaging from. That's pretty cool. The swoat outside is frightful, but the wiring is so delightful. And since we've got power to go, let it hoe, let it hoe, let it hoe. Custom drain holes don't look to be stopping. All three phases are made for popping. The lights are dimming way down low. Let it hoe, snake killing hoe. When we finally switch to 1K at night How I'll hate going out in a storm But if you really don't tune things right All the bees are likely to swarm And the snakes are slowly dying And my dear ho, we're still good buying But as long as you rewire me so Let it ho, let it ho and ho we're going to be working out in the swamp. It's a good idea to bring your hoe with you. When we forget to address that rat nest, how I'll hate going out in a storm. And if you really just love to test, bring that snake killing hoe. Oh, the snakes are slowly dying. And my dear ho, we're still good buying. But as long as your TX is slow, let it ho, let it ho, snake killing ho. That was yeah. awesome. You know, if that won't get you in the mood, nothing will. I know, right? I, yeah. That was epic. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. George. Yeah, Merry Christmas. When you when you made that segment, I was thinking that right then and there. <laughs> <laughs> oh that, wow. That hoe was no, a trooper. Would you say that no no hoes were injured during the making of that uh, video? Yeah, we can't say the same for the snakes. You just got to pick them up and wash them with the water hose, man. That's <laughs> All right. <laughs> wash the mud off. Yeah. Keep That's on going. That's pretty awesome. Gotta put your hoe. Yeah. Tommy asked me, is, "Who is it? Is that somebody from your world?" I, I didn't recognize it at first. Yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> it sounded a lot I, like Rock and Ray, but it wasn't him. <laughs> I I gotta apologize for that because I was a weekend to being totally sick. My sinuses were all messed up. I'm still messed up a little bit from that, but I couldn't resist. Yeah, now you you pretty much <laughs> nailed the spirit of the segment there. Yeah. <laughs> We've got you covered with the Home for the Holidays. Actually, we've got two catalogs this year. We've got uh, kind of like a, a health and beauty catalog. And we also have a, um, a catalog full of uh, unique ideas uh, and tools for the uh, budding amateur. Kids that are, are kind of afraid to brush, this this will uh, this will take care of that. It's a heavy-duty extreme water pick. Uh, <laughs> 
So with that kind of water pressure, you don't need any uh, any brushing. So that okay. that'll do. Wow, that should take care of it. <laughs> What's the PSI on that, Mike? I, I'm not sure his head's going to be remaining there. I don't think we have a rating on that uh, on that email. Yeah, I bet you can cut out the dentist visits after you use that thing too. <laughs> You can, but you have to you have to be careful though. You don't dial it up too much because it'll strip the enamel right off your teeth, yeah. <laughs> or teeth. Now this this next item or is tooth. is something everybody <laughs> needs to to have handy all the time. Do you want to talk about that one, George? Well, yeah, that is the Scratch Super Eighty Eight. It's combination electric tape and bandage. It's handy, water resistant, one size fits all. Only. Six dollars and ninety-three cents. It's available at most hardware stores and many pharmacies. Six hundred volt dielectric strength, <laughs> AC or DC use. It's preferred by electricians. <laughs> My, Excuse minor me. surgeries. Yeah, one roll treats hundreds of scrapes and scratches, or several minor surgeries. And uh, just a note: there, it's not tested for toxicity. And may remove skin. Yeah, I've used it. I've used uh, electrical tape for a bandage before and a piece of paper towel. I use it all the time. Yeah. Only well, you know, uh, mechanics use crazy glue when they get injured on the job. Yep. Uh, hams and electricians use uh, Scratch eighty eight. <laughs> it's all you need. I mean, you can you can solve so many problems with that. You could use heat shrink too if you run out of the Scratch eighty eight. <laughs> Depends on where the cut is. <laughs> oh, now, here, Mike, this is a nice one. Yeah, it's a heavy-duty pedicure kit. No job's too big, as you can see by the picture there. Makes quick work of uh, doing your uh, toenails. And the uh, the discs are treated with an antifungal coating, which stops toe fungus. The uh, Phil Spector Electric Permanent Wave Set. It's versatile. There's no uh, chemicals involved. You simply plug it in. And increase the voltage for a tighter curl. <laughs> 149.95. Mike, I gotta ask: is is that his real hair there? Did he have that style at one point? It is. Um, for those who don't know who Phil Spector was, um, he was a um, I don't know what, what in the seventies, I guess. Um, oh yeah, he was a, 60s um, a, produ- a music producer. Yeah. 60s and 70s. I think he's in jail right now for killing his wife or his girlfriend or somebody. Yeah, there was a there was a movie that I watched about that, but yeah. uh, we don't want to we don't want to uh, associate any negative connotations with the yeah, product. But that had nothing to do with the the. Uh, well, the curls might have been too tight. Permanent wave machine. <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe he used that for a defense in his. Uh, <laughs> It is lost. <laughs> Maybe it's um, from the polygraph. Could be. Oh, yes, the fast and easy electric nose hair trimmer. <laughs> Actually, it's not a trimmer. It's a remover. Um, for those who ever tried using those wax strips, they're painful, and uh, they don't always do a good job. But with the fast and easy, you just plug it in, set the dial, and, uh, you know, I, the picture says it all. Oh, as, a, as an added bonus, it cauterizes <laughs> nosebleeds as well. Yeah. Oh, so if you have chronic nosebleeds, <laughs> this product is for you. That'll take care of it. Surface uh, mount nose uh, uh, hairs. Yep. Well, that's that's some great health and beauty products there, but I think that's about all we could stand. <laughs> <laughs> what else you got? Oh, we have Amateur Logic Freight. Everything must go sale. It's the ho ho ho. Everything must go sale. It's the first item. That's the uh, soldering iron tip tinner stand combo. And uh, why buy two products when one product will do? Um, That'll work. It True. Holds your solder iron and tins the tip at the same time. <laughs> well, this is something perfect for Jim. Yeah. Perfect for Jim. Absolutely. Little blowtorch, heavy duty desoldering <laughs> tool. It's not shown there, but it actually runs. It looks like it's electrical, but it's actually operated on uh, propane. Ah, okay. So go it gets a job done really fast. So like the uh, like the uh, slogan says, go big or go home, and it's heavy duty and powerful. 
So Probably painful. not recommended to wear shorts when you're doing parts recovery with that. Well, well, well. we've we've got that covered. <laughs> we've got these specialized uh, desoldering shorts. Um, I had no idea. You know, this I don't know how many here. how many times uh, you've either been. They're not just for desoldering, but that was the main the main idea involved when we developed this product. Uh, desoldering, but uh, yeah, it's how it's useful for soldering as well. I know I've had it happen where you're soldering something, a drop of solder falls on your on your leg, and even if you have pants, uh, a lot of times um, you feel the heat right through the material. So <laughs> wow, these it's... are made from 100% le- leather. They're comfortable. You might even say say they're stylish. Uh, they're uh-huh. solder proof, wow. and they're IP68 rated. And they got tassels and, um, for the static yeah. discharge. That's the best and of all part. The uh, Duo <laughs> Twin soldering iron, soldering oh, no. gun combo. Again, why buy two products when one product will do? It's uh, dual function, dual wattage, saves you time. Two tools in one. It's convenient and it allows you to do uh, repairs faster. And, and you got to watch you don't put your eye out with that thing. Yep. And, uh, this one would be good to have in your glove box right here, I think. Oh, yeah. The uh, fuse repair foil tape. How many times have you had a blown fuse and you never had the right fuse in your junk box or in your toolbox to replace it? Well, you don't use a gum wrapper because, it's first of all, it's hard to find gum like that anymore. But yeah. if you have a roll of the fuse repair foil tape, it's kind of a universal product. It will repair any type of fuse up to about, uh, I think it's tested up to about 100 amps. Uh, it's economical because one roll will uh, repair up to 500 blown fuses. That's pretty good. So if you wrap that around your little 10 amp fuses, <laughs> man, you should be good to go. Yep. Absolutely. You need to get, Never need to get Tom to test those. Yep. When, <laughs> when you're soldering it, it never seems like you've got a, enough hands to hold the soldering iron, hold your roll of solder, and whatever it is. Yeah. You, you're trying like, to work like on That's a real problem. Yeah. Like I always say, I'd give my right arm to be ambidextrous. The helping hands is your third or fourth hand. Vices, uh, PCB vices and, and holders only have two points, and they have a, a limited articulation. So um, they tip over easy, uh, whereas this product is fully articulating, has multi-contact secure support, times two. And holds in any position. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty versatile, too, because sometimes you don't really need a whole hand. You just need your finger. Here, put your finger right here for just a minute. That's right. And it's great for, you know, how many of you have trouble when you're tying the bows on your presents at Christmas time? Yeah. You're trying to tighten the knot. (laughs) You know, you you could use one of those fingers just to hold hold the ribbon in place while you tighten the knot. Yeah. Yeah. I could yeah. think of the use for another finger. That's I'm not going to ask. Sinus issues? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Hey, guys, this is crazy. I didn't even have to tell the folks <laughs> out there <laughs> that <laughs> operators are standing by to take your order. And you said something about a bonus, I think. Yeah, yep. we have the uh, the bonus, and I think it's uh, $15. Uh, if you spend oh, $15, we ten. include... Or is it ten dollars? Yeah. Well, with, look at that. For must limited have been time. Feeling generous when yeah. I did these ads up. Free holiday so, bonus offer with your order of ten dollars or more. Holiday candles, flaming resistor, four hundred and seventy ohm, uh, quarter watt. I bet that makes the house smelling great. Mm, carbon composition goodness with every breath. <laughs> it's kind of like the house will smell like you let the smoke out without actually having to do it. Yep. Well, you know, if you're a ham, you smell that when you open the door. It's like home sweet home. <laughs> no, That's right. Yes. This one here, I mean, this this is one that goes back, I don't know, to my childhood almost. Electrolytic explosion. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing adds excitement to the holidays like the smells and sounds of exploding capacitors. I'm, I'm almost certain there's still the tops of electrolytic capacitors in the raised ceiling at the school I went to for electronics, CT. <laughs> Probably so. <laughs> yep. Here, here's another one. This one now, this will take you back to Christmases. 
in decades past. You know, everybody loves a Christmas story where they all gather around the radio. Mm -hmm. Now you can give your family that that same feeling, basically, every holiday season with this one right here, the free bonus offer. It's the All-American 5 Realistic Aroma of Glowing Dusty Tubes and Melting Wax. Oh, boy, that just takes me way back. Doesn't it? Comforting. That really yeah. just gives a real Cozy. nostalgic. That's uh, what I was thinking. Yep, yeah. exactly. Um, you know, you fire up <laughs> one of those old tube radios that hasn't been fired up for a while. I'm sorry, Tommy. I can, I can actually it's just right. visualize it in my yep. head right now, what that smells like. Now, this is one you'll never forget right here. Old Triad. <laughs> Long-lasting nose hair singeing transformer smoke. You know, it's nothing like that to give you a good shellacking. <laughs> <laughs> Long-lasting for sure. Lots of smoke. Yep. Transformer smoke is a very distinct smell. Yep. If that's realistic, a realistic smell coming from there, we won't be able to keep those in stock. No, and you only have to run it like a couple of minutes and you'll still have that aroma for a week or two. <laughs> yeah. I think it's really about the aromas, right? Yeah, well, it is. This one right here is something you may even have it in your toolbox, and you'll you'll recognize what we're talking about here. This is one we had to bring out: the essence of Ipecac. Keep the pounds off after that big holiday meal. It's the uh, Exolite screwdriver smell when you've got it. Closed up, you know, a set of those handles in your toolbox, and you open it up. Just that putrid smell that you get. <laughs> I guess, I guess, as a as a safety bonus, essence uh, it probably comes from the coating that's on that handle. And if you taste it, it's probably going to make you gag. So if you do happen to, yeah, you know, ha hold the screwdriver in your mouth, uh, there's no risk of actually swallowing it. <laughs> <laughs> it, do the reflex action. True. George, we, we used to have a, a set of tools we used for the printers at a shop I used to work at. Yep. All the HP printers we used to get calls for. And we we had a checklist of things before you went on a job. And one of the checklists was stinky tools. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knew what we were talking about, too. Yep. Yep. It's nothing like it. Well, not if you're trying to make a first impression, unless that person has to be a ham true well there's nothing like showing up at a job site and, and opening your toolbox they'll remember you next time <laughs> <laughs> there you go there's some gift ideas for you last minute shoppers order now avoid disappointment later santa's helpers are busy in the workshop there almost forgot we had two other packages tommy oh yeah there's another one right here <gasps> But, but wait, there's more. Yep. Actually, I got I got another message, another email. Uh, to, if you want me to go through one real quick, from sure. Somebody up north. Let's see. You've been spammed. Merry Christmas from Mike Morneau. Hmm. What is this about? Oh. Oh. Maple. <laughs> Canadian spam. So wow. I didn't know you could get actual spam in the mail, but there it is. Thank you, Mike. Hmm. I didn't know I'm you could gonna... get it in maple, the maple variety. I didn't either. notice before, but I didn't realize that Canadian spam was inspected by the U.S. Uh, DA. <laughs> oh, I see that, yeah. <laughs> okay. Something tells me it might have came from here. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, I'm definitely going to try that with some uh, green eggs. Green eggs and spam. <laughs> now I'm I'm getting hungry now. Nice. I had to ask around to see where this came from because it says T Dog, and we all know I'm, I I uh, I kind of like the cup there and. Hey dog, there's your tea. Mike said <laughs> this came from him, and I have not opened it. Oh. To see what it tastes like yet, but King Cole. Well, I had to. I had to. Uh, 
uh, as you know, I've I've tried to send uh, stuffs that are uh, gifts that are are kind of Canadiana mm-hmm. or products of Canada and King Cole. Um, I haven't tried it myself, but apparently it was the only one available that was a product of Canada from the from the tea dog hmm. place that I ordered from. So <clears throat> it's orange pico tea, which is uh, pretty popular up here. I mean, the big tea of the day used to be red rose um, tea, and uh, I don't even know if the, if red rose is still around anymore. But uh, used to get these little uh, porcelain figurines in every box. Yeah. You could tell tell when you went over to somebody's house if they were a tea drinker because they usually had all these little porcelain figurines uh, <laughs> displayed on a shelf somewhere. But um, the other oh. one, uh, my wife, Mrs. V3MIC, discovered that, Scottish Blend. Um, in fact, it's, um, it's from Scotland, and it's very good tea. She likes it. It's one of her favorites, along with the, um, the Bigamins. Um, yeah. I'm wondering... It, it's saying on there, Mike, specially blended for Scottish water. Yeah, I'm not really I sure do, what I mean by rock. that. I mean, it I th- maybe the pH of the water in Scotland that uh, that they've blended that tea, especially for. Maybe well, they have hard water over there. I'm on a well anyway, so all I know is it tastes good when you boil it. Make a pot of that or buy the cup. It's it's really good tea. You don't need I to get a, the water from the lock. I was about to run to the package store. <laughs> oh, sc- oh, <laughs> scotch water. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks, Mike. I'm going to have to try these. I have never had either one before. Yeah, no, I apologize, thanks. Tommy. Uh, you have a, a care package coming to you, too, but it's... Uh, the order was coming from the west coast of Canada, and and I'm assuming because, like I said, I sent all of these out the same day, or I ordered them all the same day, and uh, um, it's going to be late. So I have to assume that they took the long path. Yeah, that's it's pretty long right. ways anyway, but I'll keep an eye out for it. Appreciate it. Maple cookies? Maple Biscuits. cream? Flammable? Oh, he had his finger over it. <laughs> what, what is it, Mike? They're uh, maple maple green cookies. Ah, okay. Cool. You, you the question is, are there Emil. any left, Emil? Let's take a let's take a quick look. There is uh, not many left. Uh, they almost didn't make it, but <laughs> if we uh, take a zoom in here, we could see. Yeah. Yum! Look at that, stuffed with oh, maple man. goodness, and that is like really awesome. They're like shortbread with sweet cream center. It's awesome. And then, yeah, they, they almost didn't make it, Mike. <laughs> well, well, that other one, that other one that was supposed to arrive at your doorstep before the show, uh, which obviously hasn't ar- arrived yet. Um, You'll have to try those and report back. Well, I, we've got, well, I know Nigel had mentioned that he was sending us something and it, it didn't arrive in time today, so we don't know what it was. But uh, thanks, Nigel. And y'all don't really, y'all don't have to send us anything. We might drink it or taste it at least yeah, once. Yeah. yeah. So, we'll appreciate, appreciate it. Yep. Yeah. No need to send required. any um, Marmite or Vegemite, though. <laughs> but this, this right here, email, uh-huh. all I got to say is, like, I don't even know. I don't even know what to say about it. Do you, Tommy? It's, it's a, they were amazing. Right here, I can tell you what I have to say about it. There's mine. Yeah, you had the <laughs> apple. Empty. I had the the lemon and well and apple too. We split up the box that Emil sent us. Let me say these things are not cost compliant, so I don't know how he slipped it through. <laughs> but man, they they are worth it. That looks like a Hostess fruit pie. Yeah, well, it it similar. The- it looks similar, but it does not taste like a Hostess fruit pie. No, not at all. <clears throat> well, those Hostess fruit pies, I, I do <laughs> like them, but. I heard they're very bad for you. In fact, uh, I think if you eat one, it takes a year off your lifespan. 
Yep, this one make you scream AE. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were they're really fantastic. Oh man, what are you talking about? I've never, I've never had anything. I've had stuff that looked like this, but never had anything that tasted like this, Emil. Yep, those, those are, are one of the kind. Are they better if you heat them up a little bit? Yes, Emil? twenty-five seconds. Microwave, yeah. Twenty-five so seconds in the nuclear. There's, there's something about it, Mike. There's salt, sweet, and crust in the, the filling. I, I don't know how to explain it other better, than... Better than tasty pastry? Yeah, those are a little too crunchy for my taste. <laughs> yeah. These these are awesome. Yep. Yes, and it is a very uh, sought-after thing down here. There's sites dedicated to tracking the stores that actually have them in stock. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah. This wow. Uh, I, I this remember was... when Hostess uh, down there... A stop production on Twinkies, and everybody just went nuts. And folks were ordering them up here and having them sent down oh, there. Well, that's like uh, the the new Coke thing there. I think that was marketing. Oh yeah, yeah. Bound to been these things though. I would be enjoying this one right now because it's <laughs> the last one we got. However, there, I've forgotten what it said on the box. Made to be enjoyed immediately, yeah. Something like that. Uh, they have a limited, uh, a limited lifespan they- there. These were from twelve of December, and today's the fifteenth. Yeah. I had one yesterday on the fourteenth, and it was still great. wasn't quite as crunchy, but it was great. But I don't know. Email said he would rather I enjoy them and live to talk about it than to eat one on the show tonight. So, well, I, when I, the, I saw that twelfth, and uh, when the twelfth was coming near an end, I'm like, it's not going to waste. So. Yeah, that's, that's that's the only excuse he needed. Email. That's why I have just a wrapper left. Yeah, but they were that, they were really fantastic. That pie is going to make it, and so will you, George. Yeah, those, those are well worth it, even three days after. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm probably going to fire this one up when Tommy <laughs> leaves. You don't have to worry about me. Go ahead. I've already, I had mine. Awesome. <coughs> yes. Thank you. That was awesome. Merry Christmas to y'all. Yep. Thanks Merry for all Christmas y'all. Merry Christmas to you guys. Hubix New Orleans style pies. Yep. How do you pronounce yeah. it, Emil? It's Hubix. Yeah, he's Hubig. got it. Savory Simon. Hubix, I guess. Are, are you sure Simon. it isn't Hubix? Uh, you big, you big. Two bags for another slice of pie. <laughs> after you eat them, uh, if you after you eat a box of a dozen of them, you're gonna be you big, all right? Yeah, <laughs> true, <laughs> big, true. Well, I gave Tommy six of them, and I kept six. So yeah, uh, I shared mine with my family too. So yeah. I did not eat six pies. <laughs> well, <laughs> I although did, I could have, I did too, and so it ended up the only ones that I got to eat were lemon. Uh. My wife and one of my daughters wanted the apples, so oh, yeah. they they got them. Uh, but the lemon was awesome. I don't know what the apple tasted like. I got I got to ask. Pretty good. Just like so, apple. Was there any yeah. raspberry pie? <laughs> no, they don't have no. raspberry. Mm-hmm. I have a raspberry pie at home, but I haven't tasted it yet. <laughs> we don't yep. recommend that. <laughs> Me neither. Um. Speaking of uh, Nigel, you brought up Nigel. I think I might be one who got this today in the post, George. So it might be. Oh, Barrow and Furnace. Yep. Greetings cards from Barrow and Furnace. Wishing you a happy Christmas from uh, Nigel and uh, the lady Julia there. So have a, have a happy and wonderful uh, festive season to you and lady Julia too, Laird Nigel. The Logic Net's coming up uh, this Tuesday night. Emil and I will be running it this time. Uh, but we did get something from Tom, WA2IVD. He's one that's kind of coordinating the net now. I appreciate you taking over that, Tom. But he sent one that says, uh, starting in January, the Logic Net will be the fourth Tuesday of every month. So it'll be easier for everyone to schedule and put on their calendars. On any month when the net occurs before Amateur Logic live stream, one discussion item will be new topic ideas to pass along for upcoming shows. That's a good idea. I'm, a, I'm also hoping we can convince the ALTV hosts who check in to give net participants a sneak peek what what might be coming that month. 
That's a good idea, too, if we know what it is. Uh, sometimes it's a last-minute thing, but sometimes it's not. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, you, the, the, it's always hard to schedule it because sometimes we have to be flexible on the, the days that we air the show, and it was always the Tuesday after. Um, so this is this will be good. Everybody can put it on the calendar and set a reminder on your phone or whatever now, yeah. and it'll be on a fixed fixed day. Cool. So that's that's a lot going to be a lot better. So appreciate that, Tom, uh, initiating that. So that's gonna who's doing that one? Dean Martin and generally cheap. Yep. Okay. Gonna be tag teaming. Mm-hmm. All right. We'll be there. Any final thoughts before we get out of here tonight, Tommy? No. Nope. Have a, just want everybody to have a Merry Christmas and uh, Happy New Year, and, and thank you for supporting us for so long and uh, looking forward to this next year. See what comes along. Yep. Email. Any final thoughts? Keep it cheap. That's right. Don't go off the rails with those Christmas presents now. I'm watching. He's watching. You know, one day I'm going to remember this. That that's what's coming up. That's what's on his mind always. 365 days a year. That's right. Except when he ordered these pies. Yes. They that were not, not cheap. Compliant. Nope. Well, they were, they were worth it, my yep. opinion. Yep. Absolutely. That's why I had to send them in. Mike, any final thoughts from up north there? Uh, happy holidays, everyone, and Merry Christmas, Hanukkah, and... Um, Kwanzaa and everything else, um, whatever you celebrate, and uh, enjoy your time with your families, and uh, we'll see you next year. Well, thanks for joining us this year, everyone. Been another fun year of Amateur Logic. Look forward to a great 2024 as well. We'll be having another episode of Ham College. I don't know. We haven't talked about that either. It'll be be December 29th or uh, January the 5th. Yeah, so we'll see you when we see you. Yeah, we'll we'll <laughs> post in the same places. Yeah. All right. Merry yeah. Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Catch us uh, on the net Tuesday. Uh, happy Christmas. Kwanzaa and and whatever else. Seven three. And happy net. <laughs>